following is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. We want thickness. Bam, bitch. Voila. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Excellent. You know, with the bam, bitch, that's quite the entrance, you know? <laughs> I was like, can you hear me? Can you see me? Is it all working? You sound and lovely as you look. Okay, good, good. Good, because I think my entrance would have to be, Booyah, motherfuckers! <laughs> Booyah, kasha. Booyah, kasha. That sounds quite 90s. You know, it's, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting Wu-Tang Clan and Booyah Tribe vibes, and, you know, we could go on, but... Oh, bitch, wait, hold on. This is, It's because I was just listening to this. Don't start with me. Uh, uh, Hello, with the ODV album, come yes! on Yes, vinyl, you know, that's how I started out my morning uh, Do I have to switch to my old Dirty Bastard t-shirt or can I wear this one I got up in Seattle? Oh my gosh, I like it, look at the native print Yeah, yeah, this came from Throwbacks up there in Capitol Hill Representing, I didn't know you came to Seattle Yeah man, uh, my sister and I, we went up there for our 30th birthday, um, my twin, so well, we're not <gasps> We're not, we're not really twins. Chanel and Monique have met her. Shout out to my homegirl, Ashley. But yeah, that's my twin sister. Fucking yeah, we went up to Seattle. Uh, I always had a crush on Seattle. You know, I'm, I'm the biggest underground hip hop fan ever. So, you know, I've always, you know, known about the scene and shit and known about yeah. one and uh, so many different heads from up there. And then, yeah, growing up in LA, you know, it's y'all up top. We're kind of like at the bottom. So I just phew, went there. Did you have a good time. time? Yeah, yeah, it was very nice. Good, good. Yeah, so were you born and raised up there? Uh, no, I was born in Southern California. I was raised mostly up here, but I was between here and Southern California. Okay, what part of down down here, around here? Let's see. Um, Newport Beach, Costa Mesa, Santa Ana, and then Hollywood. Okay, uh, you seem kind of like an OC chick. I could, I could kind of dig it. Behind the orange curtain, you behind know. The, my, parents, <laughs> my parents used to call it that, behind the orange curtain, yep. I am a suburban white girl, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a suburban. You made me think of that meme uh, or that little video when Kodak Black was like, hey, I'm not a project baby anymore. I'm a suburbs kid. I'm not suburban. I was about to warn you about my dogs. Hey, excuse me. It's like they hear things and now they're going to be upset. Yeah. You know, so this, I, you want to meet them? Do you want to come here? You're going to, okay. Come on. I have Sasha Fierce. Sasha Fierce is behind the camera. Sasha Fierce. Okay, cool. Um, What you want to do real quick, Luna, is right click and then change your screen name from <laughs> Luna if, if you want. Where am I right clicking? Any, oh, anywhere. Green name. Thank you. Don't tell anybody. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> hey, my real name is just out to remember in the old episodes you say my my driver's license ass name, Dylan Fleming on the thing. <laughs> but um you don't get naked on the internet. No, I don't. I talk about people's rap music and I get paid for it. Yeah. Ew, steamy. <laughs> she say she feel me like some real like come around. She wag her tail and in our ponytail. That's your girl, I couldn't tell. Quickly smoke inside the cell and smoke inside. You don't have as many stalkers. I wish I, I would mean, have a stalker. I'd be like, bitch, don't follow me. <laughs> go do, go make something of your life. <laughs> All right, Mood, what's that in your cup? What you drinking? Um, it is lemon sparkling water with pink lemonade. Lemon sparkling water and pink lemonade. All right, I right, got you a lemon spritzer. Okay. Yeah, I like all spritzers. I love white wine spritzers. It's yeah. my drink. Adult cool. juice. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, uh, no hesitation. I, I feel like, you know, the less guidelines, the better for this interview. I already like your energy that you're kicking down the door with. So, uh, guidelines. What are guidelines? <laughs> guidelines. What are God? Let's do that. All right. Well, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Thickness Protection Program. This is the podcast celebrating body positivity for the adult content creator community. And if you don't already know, I am the Thickness Pro. 
<laughs> we're having a, some fun on a Sunday afternoon. I got Luna Lark in the house. Uh, what's, what's up? On, Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay, so how long have you been in the business? Pardon the interruption, protectors, but this is Pimpin' Palm, the Mac and Memoji. And before we go any further in this interview, I'm going to need you to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notification bell. And if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you are following the podcast. And please leave a rating before you get up on out of here. Now back to the Thickness Protection Program. Pimpin' Palm, the Mac and Memoji. You dig? We want thickness. Oh, it's a good question. Um, well, since 2020. Right. Because I I it's been a cute couple start. of years. I remember your your stuff being up there on Plumper Pass for a little while now. Yeah. So I didn't start doing porn for like a year because I started in the pandemic. I'm a pandemic porn As baby. Many. Pandemic porn. You're a child of the corn. <laughs> I'm a child of the porn. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you live so, up there in Seattle and you're from SoCal. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Sagittarius. Why did I get that already? Because you and Chanel Barbie kind of had that same like oomph to the oomph, you know? Oh my gosh. Me, Chanel, and, and Stella. 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 Yeah. We're all the Sages together. Yeah. And all of us together, we had a lot. Famously. The Sag badge. Okay. Yeah. And uh -huh. it's crazy because <laughs> Chanel and Stella are both December 19th and they're both like little cute blondie twins. I know. I was like, I hung out with them the other day, and I was like, "Do I need blonde hair?" Uh, uh, <gasps> no, 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 no. The brunette is sexy. Like, keep keep that. That's you. I do like the brunette. I look washed out with blonde, honestly. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, you you said washed out. I thought of uh one of my favorite indie bands is called Washed Out. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah, yeah. And well, you are what I call a dense subject matter because you know you've done so many <laughs> podcasts already. <laughs> <laughs> that makes you easy to research, but also it's like, damn, there's some homework before class. So uh, I was just catching a little little um, spoonful of you with Paisley Hayes. Shout out to my girl. And then a while ago, oh, yeah. listening to you with Bobby Lucas on Smoker's Lounge. Uh -huh. And then you did a podcast. I might have to bleep that out because they're a little questionable these days. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah. people people really like talking to you. What is it about you that, you know, people want to sit down with you so much? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> okay, we're going to learn today. Okay. I'm bubbly. I can get a little wild. I can get sassy, too. Watch out if I get sassy, though. Okay, <laughs> hands off the steering wheel. All right. Just stay calm and collected. We'll get through it. Word, okay. So you grew up in the OC. Tell me, what was Lil Luna like as a kid? Oh, I was weird. How so? <laughs> I was just funny. Like, okay, here, here's a good example. Uh, I was a deep thinker, but I like didn't understand this world. I was really upset about money. I was like a communist baby. I was like, why? I don't understand why we have to have money. We should be trading our resources, mom. I don't get it. I don't understand. And then I would watch football and I asked my dad, I was like, are they playing? Um, do they get the cheerleaders when they win? Ooh, like, what a question. They get, okay. They get the women. That's why they're playing, right? <laughs> it was like a huge joke because I'm like, hmm, why would they do this? It's for the women. It's for the women. It's for the women uh, and the millions of dollars that professional athletes get overpaid. But hey. But I didn't understand money. I don't understand money Word. as a child. Who's, your, who's your NFL team? Oh, I don't like football. Oh, never That's mind. not true. I respect football. It's kind of fun to watch. I like they put a lot of effort into it. I like, um, yeah, but I don't have a team that I go for. Whoever's on the field, I'm excited that they're playing, and I'm excited if they win. It all seems good. Uh, just, just there for the excitement and the action. I've actually never been yes. to an NFL game my whole life because we didn't get the Rams until like what 2016, and then. My family's from Minneapolis, so we root for the Vikings in this house, but uh, that only goes so far. So <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. I've never really talked that much sports on this podcast, except right before when I um, interviewed J. Crew, like right before we rolled camera, we started talking about the Cowboys and banter, banter, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm not. Yay, a sports. <laughs> yeah, he's put, put a football in my titties. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever have you ever like cosplayed or done any scenes like in cheerleader outfits? No. No. Uh, it's really weird. I don't I don't cosplay very much. 
Oh. <laughs> it's but I mean the funny thing is that um I used to have a career doing costumes right professionally so I'm like you would think that I would cosplay but I'm like mm, mm, maybe one day and I want to take it back to BC one more time BC means before COVID um take it back <laughs> okay. before that you said uh in one of your interviews that you previously had a career as an event planner I wanted to know like what types of events would you do oh my god everything okay so I started, so I went from costuming, um, but costuming, like, there's not a lot of room for growth monetarily mm -hmm. in that world. You kind of just stay there. And I didn't like that. So I went into events, but I originally got into um, nonprofit arts events. Yeah. So I produced concerts for a museum and a huge, like, art um art fair i did that for many years philanthropy so galas fundraising events um and then i moved over to weddings and corporate events i see okay so nice diverse palette of many different types yeah it's like i have a whole career or something <laughs> very, very cool okay so uh what were you like in high school like tell me what was the type of girl luna was as she hit her teen years oh no <laughs> I was wild. Um, yeah, I just didn't really give a fuck. Uh, Way to be, went, man. Yeah, yeah, right? Um, I went to a lot of different high schools, but I did go to a performing arts high school in Southern California. And yeah, I was like, what was I like? I was bratty for sure. I was a huge brat. I was also really sweet. I was really into the arts. I smoked weed every single day that I possibly could. For sure. Yeah. Are you still like a big stoner? No, not at all. I can't smoke at all. Really? Why is that? Uh, well, one, I just don't want to, in, in all honesty. That's so I like, I did a lot of drugs. I've done all the drugs you could possibly do. I did them all. It was not the life for me. It did not make me happy. I really like being present in my Why body. Why did I just imagine you butt naked on a beach with a bong in your hand and like some powder on, on the nose? Like, just, yeah, I did that, would the <laughs> that would be me. The mushrooms and the... I'm going to go crazy when I edit this with the mushrooms and the pills and everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's 100% me. Did it for years. I literally, from the time that I could possibly do drugs, I started doing drugs in fifth grade. I did them until I was, oh my God, 35? Lord have mercy. Okay. Do yeah. you Have you um, found that you have any neurodivergency through that? Or have you encountered any uh, problems <laughs> later in life through that? I was neurodivergent far beyond the drugs. <laughs> yeah, um, that that word neurodivergent has become one of the key vocabulary words here on Thickness Protection Program. Again, one that I'd never heard of until I really got my hands dirty and my feet wet in this game. But yeah, oh, neurodivergent, yeah? huh? Oh, yeah. I think um, I'm just not meant for this world. This world is not meant for me. But that's okay. I figure out ways to make it meant for me. Don't make it sound so sad, baby. It's not sad. It's this world is like our specifically our society in America is set up for a very small amount of people. So we have to find alternative ways of figuring out what works for us. That's real shit. And like one thing that I am so of, of I don't know if a fan. I don't like that word fan. One thing that I give a bravo to the sex industry and these content creators who come on the show is that <laughs> come on the show. Ski! But uh, <laughs> one thing that I, I want to give you guys claps for. Oh, now I got to make a booty clap joke. <laughs> but one thing that I want to give a round of applause for you guys is that like this is smart work. It may it is hard work, but you guys are really working smarter because, you know, like, yeah, hey, ugliest person on the planet, excuse me, could still sell feet pics and make, you know, about 30 grand a year. You know what I mean? It's true. It, you just have to find your right audience and it uh, affords you so much freedom, too. And like, I don't have to work nine to five. I can work whenever I want. Granted, I work like almost every day, but it's not for eight hours. I can work from wherever I am. It's I love it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's super flexible. You're, you know, able to do what you want when you want. And, you know, it is like all on you. The best thing about it seems like it's all on you. And the worst thing about it, it seems like it's all on you. Exactly. Small business ownership. Small business ownership. Okay. One more thing about, you know, your development. Um, did you always have this sense of confidence about you, this sense of sexiness and this, you know, sexual liberation and this openness to you? Um, yes and no. 
Like, well, I was always sexually open. That's for sure. I think I'm just super adventurous and a really open person. Um, and, but at the same time, that's like so ingrained in us, our, our beauty standards are so ingrained in us, right? So right. it's always a fight, just constantly a fight. You know, I've been every size from 130 pounds to 250 now, right? And so your body changing is a struggle, just the constant being told you're not pretty enough, your body's not this enough, no matter, it's like, I feel like well, we're never there. It's a journey. Self-love is a journey. I see. Did you graduate high school, first of all? No. Guess uh, what uh, I did. So, what did you do? Uh, I dropped out when I was 16 because I ended up at a religious school. I wanted to do my own thing. They were mad about it. I was like, fuck you. So I dropped out, got my GED in like a week, and then I enrolled in college. Okay. And how far did you go with college? Bachelor's degree. Right on. Okay. What'd Even you study? though I went to school for like ten years, I have like I have so many different degrees and <laughs> and classes I took. I took a lot of classes for a long time. Nice. I can tell you are you are a very smart woman. Like, don't ever downplay yourself. I do want you to know that. I mean, me, well, you, you know, I have a bachelor's degree as well, and I'm just always kind of curious. No matter who my guests are, music artists, sex workers, you you name it. I'm always kind of curious to the role of which education plays into their success. Um, do you give any credit to your education of your success and what you do today? Ooh, I mean, yes and no. I hate the school system, honestly. Hmm. I do not flourish in the school system. It's really challenging the way it's set up for me. I love learning though. Like I have taught myself so much and I think college taught me that I can teach my th myself things outside of school and I can use school um, in a way like I can't get hooked on, like I never showed up every day. Right. I was right. never the person with good intentions. I was the person who was acing tests and doing amazing on projects and showing up a quarter of the time and constantly being in trouble because I never show up and like making, you know, so but I love classes and I love like researching and I love taking different courses. So I love college for that. Um, I love education for that in general, but I also don't really feed into that you need a degree and piece of paper to get anywhere in life. It makes sense. I mean, I, I always want to say, you know, it's different strokes for different folks, but you know, you have a good head on your shoulders about that. So I, I think, you know, obviously you moved in the right direction. I did. I took a job as a waiter. Yeah. I'm trying to flex on my haters. Nice. That part don't happen till later. Shit. I'm peeling off layer by layer. 75 cents on my tap card. Right. Carry more weight than a rap bar. Yeah. I seen a thug on the bus Possible op so I act hard Get to my stop and I go quick I left my wallet like oh shit Just got to work and I'm hopeless Five minutes in it I'm so sick I kill a beat like a massacre These people think I'm a janitor Bitch wanna ask for the manager I obviously wasn't a fan of her I'm livid cause nobody tipping I fill up the water they sipping They fuck up the vibe and they dipping I've been considering stripping Might be a possible option Buy me a drink when you drop in. Maybe I'm supposed to be broke. And life is a game I cannot win. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, do you have children? No. Okay. All I right. have no children. No children. Are you married? Nope. Nope. Okay. I'm um, divorced. Divorced. Okay. Uh, do you want to <laughs> tell me how that started and stopped? <laughs> sure. If you want to know about my divorce. Spit it on the thickness protection program. <laughs> okay. It's like, I also feel like all my exes always watch my shit. They'll see it. It doesn't matter. Hey, guys, make sure you uh, like and comment and subscribe to YouTube.com slash Palm Official. And uh, if you're listening on Spotify, make sure you follow. Thanks, exes. <laughs> and send me money, bitch. If send you're me my money, ex, too. Send me money. Cash after Venmo's Dylan is Palm. <laughs> <laughs> Drinks on me when Luna Lark comes back to L.A. next time. <laughs> yes. Hey, all right. Okay, so let's see. Um... I got married to someone who I loved and adored and we were married for what felt like forever and ever and it was uh, awful. It was terrible. <laughs> it changed pretty quickly. I was also a completely different person like mentally. It helped me grow tremendously. Like I'm so thankful for that uh, growth opportunity but it was really painful too. Um, and so 
it, it was just, it was chaotic and he was, he was just a really bad drug addict and I did everything I could and it was just killing me and tearing us apart. And so I had to leave and I kind of waited until I knew that he was going to be okay-ish, you know, like that was the whole thing. I just didn't want him to die for a long time. Wow. Okay. So the drug abuse was that serious that it was like life-threatening? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was really bad. It was really like, I can't, I won't express how painful, I could never express how painful that is. But if you've ever dealt with that, you absolutely know that struggle, right? You don't know where your loved one is or what they're doing or if they're going to wake up or, or what every single day. It's really right. stressful and heartbreaking. And, um, but it like, I grew so much and coming out of that, I like, I think that like also propelled me into this work because I like I had pushed down my desires for so long trying to take care of someone else. I came out of that and was just trying to explore connection in deeper ways and connection with myself and um, my sexual exploration and love. I've always been open. I've been like in the fucking kink scene and and Polly for, I don't know, years and years, right? right. But I felt a newfound freedom uh, to explore that in a really healthy way. And then the pandemic happened and I was like, oh, let's just masturbate on the internet. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> really? So the divorce was like freshly a thing and then the pandemic happened? Yeah, it was like, wait, hold on. No, I think I'd been di divorced for like a year. Okay. which in my world is like fresh right like i got divorced and then i was i had some fuck buddies and all my fuck buddies would be like you're you take pictures of your butt and put it on instagram don't you and i was like no that's a thing can i do that <laughs> <laughs> so in previous interviews i've heard and even in this one you already said like you've been skinny you've been big you've been all in between like uh being comfortable in your own skin how did how did that moment when you like said oh i really am sexy i really do got it going on i've always felt that i was sexy um at any size in any shape any size any shape cool. that's always been there but it's always been a fight because there's another voice that says i'm not Right? right. So it's like this fighting because internally, I've always liked my curves. I've always been super curvy. Um, you know, I don't know. I always found myself attractive. I always liked curves. I just like people. You can be skinny and I'll think you're sexy too. It doesn't matter. So it's always there. It's just like growing that voice to be bigger than the other voice that tears you down. I like it. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up um, in stand up comedy, my mentor, Bobby Oliver, she always talks about, you know, that voice in your head that it's like when you got to practice meditation, it's like it's it's the process of eliminating that voice and just listening to your breath you yeah. know, and controlling your breathing. Um, and and there, there's lots of exercises she teaches in her classes and in her books that like I really, really um, recommend for sex workers and the content creators I interview because they've done like wonders for me as far as like the content I create and just, you know, my overall like present media presence. So yeah. who is this person? Text me their name. I want to know now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll plug you in with her. Cause Bobby is the fucking goat, man. Like everybody in LA, if you do stand up, you know, this woman. So like she owns her okay. own studio. That's my, and I've known her since I was 14. So she like pretty much like half raised me, you know what I mean? So yeah, Bobby, That's amazing. Yeah, Bobby will always get her props on everything I do now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I like how we both wore purple today. <gasps> yes. Royalty. Yeah. Royalty. Yes. So what was the first company you shot with? Plumper Pass. Nice. Okay. So you, bar was set kind of high or very, yes. very high. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now you flew out to Miami. How was that experience, you know, working with Clint and the guys Plumper Pass? I did not fly out to Miami. Actually, I was in Vegas. It was like, COVID was, I don't know, was it 2021, I think? It was like we had put it on the books for a long time, but it kept getting pushed out because of COVID. And so the first time we could do it was like in March or February of 2021. Um, and I went to Vegas. 
And I actually, uh, Kendra Lee Ryan, I had met on Chatterbait and she was helping me prepare and like get in the industry. And so I went to her house in LA and then drove out there to Vegas and we had a ball and it was excellent, fun as fuck. <laughs> Very cool. And shout out Kendra Lee Ryan. Um, I'm familiar with her work on Plumber Pass as well. And then her appearance on Soft White Underbelly. And she got a scene. <gasps> did she have Blessing. Soft White Underbelly? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did one. I want to see that. I'm going to call yeah. her and be like, show me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I am such a fan of Mark Laisha. I am a loyal, uh, what's it called? Not. I have the app where, you know, you pay 10 bucks a month to. Patreon. Uh, Patreon, yeah. You know, because I, I don't want to catch myself watching other people's misery for my own entertainment. But, you know, I, I do want to support that cause, you know, because it's very, his platform's very educational. It is very educational. I have mixed feelings about some things, but you know, that's that's everything in the, this world, you know. Yeah, it's all shades of gray. I think sometimes the world and the internet kind of force you to choose sides, and it's like it's not supposed to be that way. No, everything is good and bad and in between. Okay, so um, <laughs> who are some of the other studios you've shot with aside from Plumber Pass? Uh, let's see, Blush Erotica, Jeff's Models, Pure BBW. And people are going to be mad if I forget somebody. Oh, BBW Ventures. Right, right. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. For sure. Now, um, do you prefer to, like, create your own content uh, as just Luna Lark and release independently through you? Or do you, um, like, work yes. in the studio? I love studios. <laughs> 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 I love studios. It's just a different experience shooting for studios than it is for yourself. I do like my uh, working for myself because then I own the content. I'm in control of it. But then studios, it's a great learning lesson for productivity or professionalism, yeah. um, how to open up to the camera, how other people who have been doing it forever do it. Uh, what else? Marketing. It's a huge, like, it's free marketing for us, you know? Right, it right. It expands our fan base and... So there's benefits to both, but I do like working for myself. Awesome. Okay. You like working with yourself. Now, this year, you and Monique Leslie had an opportunity to do a cross-country tour. I saw y'all out there in D.C. and out there in Philly. So you did in the did. New York. So I think you did the East Coast proper? Yes. I go to the East Coast all the time, though. Nice. Okay. So when you're on tour, uh, are there any stories or uh, things that, you know, you like to do or like anything you want to share <laughs> like <laughs> stories bitch <laughs> there's stories every day that shit's crazy <laughs> spit it <laughs> it's like i don't know uh i don't know if there's stories we want to talk about though <laughs> i mean there's everything um okay i think that there's like magical things that happen every time i travel amazing there was one time i like left a hotel at 5 a.m and I was just was like, you know, I'm just going to walk around New York at 5 a.m. Fuck it. Because I had a plane that left at like 8 a.m., right? So I just needed to go get my shit, get on the plane. I end up in Times Square and no one is there. I have Times Square all wow. to myself. So that's yeah. like the scene in Will Smith's I Am Legend, you know, when Times yeah. Square is empty. Wow. Yes. And what time of night is this or day? 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Wow. Okay. So if you ever want to be in Times Square by yourself, 5 a.m. works. Wow. But magical shit like that happens all the time, right? Right. And Monique Thanks. told me that uh, you twerked in D.C. in front of the Capitol building. No, oh, yeah, we did. That. <laughs> <laughs> hey, January 6th, January this, ow. <laughs> That's the shit that I'm like, I don't know. Everywhere I go, something happens. We did. We did a twerking videos. I maybe, it maybe peed in some bushes, too. No. On the kids. That's so. You know, yeah. you know, you know, there's not um, enough bathrooms that are around, especially at nighttime. I'm just saying. Yeah. Prior to this podcast, you know, I'll, people, you know, you think women peeing in public is such an unladylike thing. And I'm like, hey, now I'm like, hey, if you got to go, you got to go. I don't give a shit. Actually, you know, I prefer. Well, you wouldn't give a shit. It's peeing. <laughs> <laughs> that was really dope. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, that's what I'm good for. Uh, my bad. Continue. I had to. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. Um, I know it's very unladylike, but the you know, if we're going with ladylikeness, I'm not even in the category. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like fuck it. I'm not fuck even it. qualified for that. I'm shit. not I even what qualified. Doing, don't even start. We're not even in that realm or box. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I like peeing in in nature. It feels better. Yeah, is it more animalistic? I was watching a video that Spooky Fat Brat had tweeted of her just peeing outside, and I've never been like you know a piss fan myself, but I was like, this is kind of neat. <laughs> yeah, I just like the breeze is your toilet paper. <laughs> That's where we're going on this podcast. Shit. <laughs> The magic of <laughs> magic. The magic of, it's yeah, like it's magic. Like organic. Yeah. We're bringing it back to the earth. We don't have to use a bunch of water. Are, you know that it's like five gallons of drinking water every time we flush the toilet. That's an interesting fact. I mean, I probably that's a was lot of it. drinking water we waste. Yes, Just that is. Pee outside. It's pee better outside. for the environment. Okay. That's right. how we'll end climate change. Right. Yo, no worries. I'ma do my damn thing. No worries. No worries, baby. 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 No worries. Uh, okay, Luna, let's go down in the DM. What is the craziest, most funny, out of pocket, ridiculous DM or email you have ever received? Oh my God, I don't know. They're all, all the time like it's all it's all the same shit i don't know everyone wants to know that but we've all heard it before everyone's like oh somebody wants me to poop on them okay <laughs> i gotta stop laughing like i haven't heard that a million times on this podcast i gotta stop oh, laughing heard so hard times. Times, but I'm like, laugh, laugh okay wait time. this is my favorite my favorite kind of dm to get yeah is when it's really obviously put through a translator i see and it is like you know it's talking about like your your <laughs> your comfortable vagina or some weird shit where you're just like my thick throbbing member and you're like what the fuck is this wow. for, that's for, my favorite for, for some reason that reminds me of you know the descriptions on jeff's models that are written so eloquently it's like he dived his dinosaur dingus into her velvet vortex i'm like yes okay writer's team get down i see y'all yes <laughs> like, yeah. like, i'm reading favorite. erotic novels on jeff's so i'm like okay so if it's a paragraph and it is like gone through a translator yes my favorite <laughs> excellent two i want to do skin deep with you the tattoo on your rump is excellent what exactly is that of the, uh can I show you? I don't have underwear on. Yes, you may. And I'm going to have to edit this out. There will be a picture for the viewers. Okay. Who did so it's up? an octopus. Yeah. That's my octopus. It's blowing bubbles. It goes all the way around. Okay. And what's the meaning behind this? Um. Well, <laughs> should I be honest? <laughs> Always be honest. Okay. Even if we weren't so, podcasting, just be honest with me as, you know, your okay. homeboy. Here's the wild story. When I was a young 18, 19 year old, I dated someone um, attached to an organized crime um, syndicate. And I lived in Hollywood and I was wild. And so I tattooed their name on me. Now they tattooed their name on me too. So, mm -hmm. So I had this big tattoo of this person's name on me. And um, then when I was getting married, my uh, ex-husband was like, I cannot marry you with someone else's name that I like nice. look at when I fuck you. So I was like, okay, we got to get it covered up. I love octopuses. I'm just going to put a big octopus there. That'll look cool. No. So is the <laughs> octopus your spirit animal? Um, it's a helper animal. I'm a whale actually. Oh, really? What yeah. makes you a whale? What makes me a whale? I mean, I'm actually a bunny and a whale. I was literally about to say, I'm the, let me show you. I am the Energizer bunny and an oct, fucking green screen. Um, okay, I'll have to show you later. Okay, I'll have to show you this without a green screen. But okay. I'm the Energizer bunny and an octopus at the same time. You know what? Look at that. Because it's like. The Energizer Bunny is like, he cool as fuck with the shades on, big ears, like good listener, you know, ears yeah, to the yeah. street. Like, march to the beat of your own drum. 
And it's like, you know, just keep on going. Just keep going. Just keep going. And then the octopus, like the tentacles, because I got my arms around so many different things. Exactly. Multitasking energy. Yeah, multitasking. I, I don't, and then I'm kind of a believer of like, you don't do anything well multitasking, but then that's, you know, this is, then that's all my problems in my life. Ah! But, but what is it? Uh, what's master of none? What comes before master of none? Masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades, master yeah. of none. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Jack of all trades, ma master of none. Yeah. Um, I've written so many raps that like have started like Jack of all trades, master and nada. Still thirty, living with his parents up by locking out Jesus Christ, <laughs> I I could go crazy. Um, let's take a couple Instagram questions. Uh, yeah. Hip, hip hop music head uh, asked, "What is the one thing you want to accomplish while you're still in the industry?" Oh my gosh, there's two things actually. Um, I really want to accomplish setting up a mentorship program. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so like um, people go through some sort of training who have been in the industry for a while so that when you enter, you can be set up with mentors. Because, you know, every, every other entertainment thing has mentors. That's how we learn. And in this industry, it's like people gatekeep information. And that keeps us unsafe. So I really want to set that up. Nice. That's such a noble cause. I think that's definitely needed. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, I definitely think I would recommend you tap in with like Jaden Stone because she's right now studying in psychology to become a marriage and family therapist for people in the industry. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, one more Instagram question is your bucket list, one through five, Ch -ch -ch loaded. Oh my God, my bucket list. Well, I want to go to Indonesia for sure. Ooh, why there? Oh, it's really spiritual there. I see. Yeah, it's really spiritual there. I want to live outside of the United States at least for a couple months. I can see you doing that. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun. Um, other bucket list things. I don't even live like this. They just happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think. Um, it's usually travel related. Um yeah oh my god i'm so terrible at this i don't know okay well uh to waste not so boring. not 285 you'll have to tune into the thickness protection program another time next time luna lark comes back because those <laughs> other two or three choices will be met yeah. biggest misconception of a lady in your profession oh biggest misconception um I think that just because we do this work, we wouldn't want to come home and fuck. Interesting. That's that's like a. I think that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. People assume that like it's all left on, left at the at work. You know, like we just give all of our sexuality away at work. We're never horny outside of work. Yeah, and what I've learned through many of the performers who do come on this podcast. Oh, oops, I said it again. Uh, who do appear on this podcast is that <laughs> uh, there's a big difference between work sex and personal sex. Yep. When, when it's not in front of the camera, the lighting and the makeup's not perfect and the this the, the, and everything's not camera ready. It can be better because you can just be you and not have to be Luna Lark. A hundred percent. Okay. It's just different. It's just different. Okay. Um, one other Instagram question was, do you have any scenes upcoming? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Oh, I have a huge library of scenes. Does a, okay. does a movie theater have popcorn? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yep. I have never put out a scene where I've taken multiple dicks. Oh, gang bang. I have two scenes yeah. coming out. I have one scene with Monique Leslie. There's like six dudes in there. Hello. Six, five, four, I don't remember. You mean you two, big, you two big old girls are on that many guys? Yes. How did you do it? We take all the dick. It was really fun. I had a great okay. time. And then uh, there's one that's really great. It was literally just in my bedroom, which I love even more. And it was my friend uh, with a strap on. Mm -hmm. And then it was my other friend with a real penis. And they did an Eiffel Tower, and it was the sweetest thing ever. They, like, held hand while they fucked me. I think I saw a clip of that on your Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah the girl had the strap on, and the male talent had it was... Oh, that looked lovely. Yeah, it it was. It was very intimate and yeah, fun, and intimate. we all giggled and cuddled, and it was just, it was nice to be in my house shooting, too. Beautiful, beautiful. How did you wind up in Seattle? Uh, So, my family moved up here when I was four. I see. 
Yeah, so I stayed in here, and then I moved down to California in my teenage years, and then I stayed down there, and I came back um, in my, like, mid-20s. Okay, so you're kind of up and down the West Coast? Yep. Did I see P&W on your bio, so have you spent time in, like, Oregon, too? I mean, I've spent time, but I haven't lived. Okay, what about what about the Bay Area? Uh, spent time, but not lived. I've only lived in Southern California and Seattle. Very cool, okay. Yeah. Uh, what type of music are you into? Everything. So when you jump in the car, who are you listening to? And like, who's on your pre-scene playlist? Right now I'm listening to Tame Impala because Gibby nice. the Clown put me onto that. Yeah, was- yeah. And your Easter scene with Gibby was magnificent, I must Thank say. Thank you. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, that's who I'm listening to right now. But I also listen to a lot of like meditation music too. Yeah. So- boring like that <laughs> meditation music's not boring at all you know like again like when bobby pra- teaches her meditation practices i mean i found that through spotify myself using the meditation music or the the water and the rain sounds and the bath it's great sounds. i listen to ram das a lot too i don't know what that is i'm not familiar ram das you're gonna fucking love ram das ram Put das Okay, Ram Das was one of the founders with Timothy Leary, um, who took a lot of acid. He was originally a psychologist at Harvard, was a professor, right? Then he gets in with Timothy Leary into the whole acid movement, is seeking like deeper and deeper experiences, goes to India, finds a guru. The guru takes all of his acid, all of it in one sitting and is like, you don't need this does nothing it like doesn't get him high that's like how next level he is wow so his mind was already so complex that like these all these psychedelics couldn't enrich him for anything yeah he was just already holding all these different like mindscapes so ram das stays in india and studies with this guru for years and years comes back this is like 60s 70s comes back to america starts teaching has a big following he's like a guru himself although he might not say that but he's dead now he has a ton of teachings it's fun because it's like this eastern philosophy but like uh, coming through a southern california guy very like hippie california in the 70s i definitely want to check that out um one book i definitely want to recommend to you on that same sort of kick is uh acid for the children which is flea from red hot chili peppers book oh i love flea and if i say in that wrong i'm gonna have to edit it but yeah red hot chili peppers are the shit you know anybody from la and socal listens to them so that yeah that you know i love my music journalism and my um good rock star stories so that was definitely one of them listen to that on audiobook (laughs) Okay, I have to listen to it now because I love Flea. I played the bass guitar for a long time. And oh, cool. I, it's always an inspiration. Bruno Love just hit me with this music video. The song is called Times Get Rough. It is produced by Merck and mixed and recorded by Sauce Factory LA and KC the Sauce. Uh, uh, uh. Here we go. Hey. Busting down a bird and I'm acting All up. Packs. Money on my mind, packs ain't enough. Gotta play for the juice, only eight to nine. Okay. Only eight in, the, in the baby bottle. <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. Fuck the money if you love me, honey. Homie, run it up. Oh, okay. My nigga got the money and the hoes. Oh, cool. Do you like, so you, you played bass? You're a musician? Yeah, and the cello for many years. Okay, do you write and record music today? No, I've never written my own music. I don't know why. I'd probably write awesome things, but I mean, also I can't play with these nails. Those things are fly. Yep. I mean, even you do a lot of computer work. You never thought about trying to like produce or do something cool like that on the side. I totally should because I have a Spotify playlist where they're like mashups that should happen. Yeah. But I don't know how to run that software i just have never played around with it you know what we could totally do girl let's do a blends playlist and then post it and be like okay this is what dylan i mean this is what palm posts and then this is what luna posts totally let's do yeah that'd be be kind of a cool little share all right yeah yeah. so like crossovers we got oh yeah all right all right uh anything else you want them to know about you here on thickness protection program luna oh my gosh no (laughs) 
to you. I'm like, no, well, get out. Well, get out of here then. Damn, fine. No, don't know anything about me. I want to be secretive and mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. So do I. But it, uh, hey, um, so you're not coming out to Chicago Exotica, but you were at a, were you you were at AVNs. Um, what is your thing about like the? Do you like or uh, in, how do you feel about the conventions and the award shows and the expos and stuff? Um, I like them. I mean, it's a great opportunity to network and be together with people because, you know, we're work alone a lot of the time. So it's mm -hmm. really nice to be with community. Um, and I like to meet, meet fans. That's amazing. It's also can be exhausting. Like I'm a super sensitive person, um, especially to my surroundings. So I mean, and I'm like secret to, secretly introverted. So I like being alone a lot. So it's a little bit hard in that regard. So I have to like really manage my time well and have some downtime. And so I think this year I'm going to do a little bit less conventions because I travel a lot already. So I think I'm just going to do Miami and New Jersey. Nice. With your event planning background, do you have like a keen eye for these sort of things? Like yes. how they could be better? Yes, constantly. And I feel like I, that's another goal of mine is that I want to do shoot houses, um, specifically like women run. And um, I want to start learning more about filming nice. and being on the directing side of things and then like giving that information to other women so we can be directors and filming and we don't have to like go to a shoot and depend on a dude to have a camera and know all the tricks. We can be like, actually, this is how I like it. And yeah. this is what I'm going to do it. Like you can have all your equipment there and have your own. Like I, I saw in the interview how you said you edit all your own stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm definitely impressed by that. Not not saying that you you couldn't for any other way, but I understand be that I edit all my own stuff that it is so much work. So yeah. especially when you're doing it with the level of professionalism you bring to the table. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> all right, Luna, we'll go ahead and throw out your social media and where they can find and stream all that beautiful content of yours. Uh let's see. My all my links are at lovelunalark.com. And then my like, oh, model centro is lunalarkx.com. My OnlyFans is lunalark. My Twitter is lunalarkx. And um, my Instagram is literally ever changing. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> the shape shifting Instagram because those folks at Meta are some haters, especially the BBWs. <laughs> This week it's Luna Lark underscore BBW, but I have a million backups. The one the, the biggest following is the one I'll be using. And so. by the time this interview comes out, who knows what it'll be? We'll no, have it's to, still going to be that. We're keeping this one keep for it, a while. Speak, speak it, speak it into existence. It's going to be at least a year, maybe two. All right. Oh, well, I'm Luna, on TikTok too. It's really dumb. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You shout out to TikTok. Um, well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into Thickness Protection Program. Luna Lark, thank you for getting down with the thickness. Thank hey, you. You can follow me at Instagram at the Thickness Protection Program with two C's. You can follow me on Twitter at Thickness Pro. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. Make sure you are following the podcast on Spotify. Go ahead and leave a like on Facebook. Make sure you share the episode on Spotify if you enjoyed it or share it wherever you're watching. And until next time, Luna, why don't you join me in singing this chant? We want thickness. We want thickness. We want, we want thickness. thickness. We want thickness. <laughs> we want thickness. <laughs>